Mr. Prime Minister, what a pleasure to see you once again in Beijing. I'm very, very happy to be back. So who have you met? Uh, what's your observation of uh, China today? Oh, you know, it's still growing. I'm very impressed by, you know, the architecture of all the big new buildings. And I'm impressed by the quality of the architecture. We went through a lot, isn't it? Oh, and a lot, you know, I came here uh, many, many years uh, ago. The first time it was in 1994. As Prime Minister with Team Canada, I was here with 500 uh, business people and the Premier of the provinces. It was uh, the beginning of a very good relation that I developed with China. When I came here, the economy of, you know, of China was smaller than the Canadian economy. Now it's 10 times bigger after 30 years, or 29 years, rather, and uh, you know, it's still growing. And, uh, you know, China has become uh, the second biggest economy in the world and still growing, and uh, they're taking a bigger place in the world, and it's good. But with that, there is always a little bit more problems because uh, it's the nature of things. But uh, I think that uh, it is in the best interest of the West and the people of the East to work together. Because the last 30 years, the development of the East, like China, has created a lot of wealth around the globe. And we all have benefited from that. How would they work together? Do you have your advice? Oh, we have to talk and we don't have to pay too much attention to uh, some of the stories that are written by you guys of the press. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you want to have good news, so sometimes there are a lot of exaggerations in the stories and we need dialogue, we need to meet each other and we can disagree. You know, we, we disagree all the time in, in life <laughs> with our co-workers, sometimes within the family. And, but when you keep your cool and uh, you're reasonable, you find a solution. What is reasonable? But it's depending on the problem. I think that uh, we have to accept the reality. The reality is the world is changing. Uh, the growth and the populations are more on the east side of the globe than on the west side of the globe. And it's normal because there are a lot more people living here and in other nations like India and so on. So we, uh, but we have better communication, it's easier now. You know, my predecessor, Pierre Trudeau, came once. For me, I met 17 times the president of China and always had good personal relation with them. Are we lacking these kind of uh, personal interactions? Probably. And uh, Why? You know, things are moving too fast and we're probably, uh, you know, the nature of the people in charge too. Uh, in any country, the leader makes a difference. Uh, sometimes the individuals have a different perspective. But if we lose, look, we have to look at the future, the long term. And the long term make it very clear to me that Canada and China, you know, we are complementary. We have the resources, we have the land, and you need resources, but you have the people. So we have to eat, help each other. I want to let you help us to do a reality check today. How would you describe the general change that we are experiencing? The technology is moving so fast that it's difficult to cope with that. But we have to adjust. When I started in politics, you were not born in, you know, uh, 1956. I was already involved in politics in Canada as the president of the students in my political party. 
And, you know, we didn't have a TV, we didn't have a lot of radio, uh, but the communications were always by use print. Uh, things were moving much slower, but the problems were the same. And we found a solution at that time based on the resources and the capacities we had. Now the resources are different, the capacities are enormous, but human nature adjusts to these changes as we had to adjust. When I look back sometimes, I remember that I felt that we were in front of impossible situation. And when I look back, I realize that it was not that complicated. But when you face on a daily basis a problem facing you, uh, you think it's enormous. But you have to look left, you have to look right, you have to look above or underneath, and you find a solution, and you're over the wall, and life keeps going. Now, China and the United States has become, their relationship has become the biggest concern for many around the world. I would assume also for many in Canada. So what do you make of this interesting relationship these two are having? But it's a new era. 30 years ago, China, the Chinese economy was smaller than the Canadian economy. Now it's 10 times bigger. China has become, you know, the biggest player vis-a-vis -vis the United States. So it's not the same situation, but it is in the interest of both to make progress together. Of course, there's problems always exist. So what is the biggest problem do you see they're having right now? Preoccupation that is everybody has, they want to maintain a good economy on both sides and some people get nervous about the development. Sometimes uh, one of the two parties think that the other one is not fair. Sometimes it is not very accurate. But if you, have, anyway, if you have a problem, you have to sit down and to discuss the problem. And if you're candid and fair and honest, you have to explain why you have to do something. So you're under local pressure, local needs that sometimes get in contradiction with the needs of the other. And it's just because of you know, take the climate change. Now, it, there's no bother about it. What happened here, or what happened in Canada or United States, affect the climate of the world. And if we don't do what is needed, we all pay the same price. There is always the issue of trust. Some suggest without that, it's very hard for them to work together, even on the global issues. Of course, they're trying, it seems. I have to tell you, you always feel, feel that it is very difficult. And it's why well, you have to move. You have to face the reality. You cannot sit back and do nothing. If you have a problem, you discuss and you find a solution. But I make the common at times that in public life to fill a hole sometimes you have to dig two more <laughs> so in public life you're always digging to find enough to fill the new hole and it's never ending we think after the oh now we're all right and bang two days later a new problems occur and still you're preoccupied but when you're in public life you know, you're in that to face reality. And the great pleasure is to participate in finding the solution. And for me, I have the pleasure because I'm not a kid anymore. And I was in public life 
for 40 years and I have 20 years since I quit, so I have a lot to look back. And, you know, and it's a lot of pleasure to realize that you were involved in finding solutions at that time. How were you trying to find solutions despite there was no or lack of trust? But, you know, there is always people who, you know, they think that's a lack of trust. It's not necessarily that. It is the problems and the interests are not the same for one of the two parties. And, uh, and when you want to solve the problem the way you think it should be solved, and the others do not think the same thing, it's not a lack of trust. It might be a loss of understanding of the nature of the problem. And the desire for both sides to find a solution helped a lot. What does it take to understand? I remember Confucius once said, uh, you know, when you hear, you know it. When you see it, you uh, believe it. But when you do it, you understand it. You know, if you have the knowledge of the situation and you face it, you know, you're in good position. You cannot run away from a problem. You have to face it and recognize it and look for a solution. And both sides are looking for solution. They don't want they all want to have a good relation. Nobody wants a bad, a bad relation. Nobody wants war. You, you, someone get trapped into a war. But I don't know a lot of leaders who get up in the morning and say, I'd like to have a war. No, they all want to have peace, normally. You brought your great-grandson. Yes, I'm here with my great-grandson. I'm here today. We are four generations together. <laughs> How sweet. And the, uh, the great-grandfather, the other great-grandfather of my great-grandson is the one who started the Canada-China Business Council. And now the president of Canada-China Business Council is my own grandson. Amazing. So, and uh, so the two families are related now. And, and so my family, uh, and I've been involved with China since a long time. So do they ask you about what shall I do when they are facing with uh, difficult questions? Did they ask you for advice? Oh, but they do. But they have to do their own business, you know. For me, I'm there to give advice, but uh, there is a time when they have to be on their own, and they are on their own and doing very well. And for me, I'm there if they need me. And I'm lucky, I'm still in good shape, and uh, I'm very happy that I will be 92 months. And uh, Congratulations. I'm happy to be here, to be able to come back. I hope so. Now, if you look at China-U.S. relations, we're heading for APEC, the Asia-Pacific Economic Leaders Meeting. Canada is also a party in the Economic Leaders Meeting. You were there. I was here in Shanghai when it was presided by uh, the president of the day. Yes, indeed. So, uh, do you have some best wishes? Uh, it's always a good dialogue, very useful, that we know each other. It's one advantage of today. We have an occasion to know each other. And these meetings are very good if you take advantage of it. It was a good occasion to develop you know, good rapport with uh, my colleague at the APEC meeting. You know, it's important that they have this meeting and have a good dialogue. And not being afraid to speak frankly. That's very important. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Prime Minister, for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very All much. All the best to you and 90s, happy 90th birthday in two months. Good, good. And I'm happy that I'm here with my great-grandson, my grandson, my daughter, my son-in-law, so four generations in China together. It's very rare, and it's a very, very happy occasion. What do you want them to see the most? Oh, you know, we're busy Especially here. the nine-year-old. 
No, no, he's visiting around here. He's very busy. He went to the wall and, uh, you know, he's visiting something else. And <laughs> my daughter will make sure that he sees as much as possible. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.